Hello. And thanks so much for holding out for us. Uh, ne nearly over, nearly party time. Uh, we are, I hope you're going to see some of the links, but what we are talking about will be quite different, I think, from, from most of the other papers in the <coughs> session, especially with the ones in the afternoon, which have largely been focusing on in some way on the processes of archaeology and, uh, and, and, and the archaeological pro profession's take on failure in many ways and what it means to fail in, in, in that process. Whereas we are looking at failure from a slightly different perspective, but in a similar way, we would like to invite the same type of dialogue that Neil has just called for, which we will we'll get to at the end. But uh, so our, our, our mission essentially is um, to build, to make an exhibition about, about failure in, in, in a space within, within UCL in, in London, in, in the Octagon Gallery, and, and Vesna will say some more about this. <coughs> um, so initially it was meant to be next October, it's got put back, so probably the start of, of, of 2019. We, we have to open what we called the, the Museum of Failure um, in, in central London, and, and th we thought with, with seeing the call, Alison and, and Lorna's call for this, this, this uh, session, I thought this is a great opportunity to get some feedback and to, to talk to other archaeologists about, about what, what it means to fail in, 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 in a material culture sense in a, and, and how can we exhibit that. <coughs> um, but we start with this. If it works, let's hope it did. This love, we, faith, cease, sign, that, that. There she goes. So this was an image from Ariane 5. Oops, why does this not want to go away? There. An image from Ariane 5, uh, the European Space Agency's uh, space program in, in 1996, in January 1996, which was meant to launch two la massive satellites into orbit. Um, took 10 years to create this project, cost about seven billion dollars. 37 seconds, it blew up. Um, so it has a failure, we can, you know, it's been called one of the most massive blunders in, in the space age, in, in, in many ways. Um, you know, no, no surprise that it has. And, and we will come back to this, so it does make sense. There, there is obviously a, another link that obviously this is, this is, a, is a massive failure. And, and we'll, we'll come back to, to the link with our, with our concept, our exhibition. And the background is, is this, and I'll talk you through this because I think it might be interesting t to some degree to think about how it came about and, and what we're trying to achieve. So I work for um, UCL Culture, which is the, essentially the Museums and Collections Department in, in University College London, where we have a, a quite a, a large collection of something like three quarters of a million, 800,000 artifacts, that's when we stopped counting. So a lot of material culture from lots of different um, kinds, disciplines, backgrounds, Egyptian archaeology, zoology, ethnog ethnography, other types of archaeology, um, uh, pathology, lots of, lots of different things. And, and th this will primarily be what we will be drawing on for the, for the collection. But um, So we used to be called Museums and Collections. And then in 2016, there was a massive rebrand, um, very PR heavy, into UCL culture. And as part of that, there was this working group called the Experimental Museum. And I was part of this, so we explored what does that mean? What does it mean to be a museum in the 21st century? How can we push the boundaries? And sorry, you can some of you might not be able to read this. Don't worry too much about it. This is the UCL Culture Manifesto. You can Google it. You can look up, up online. I, I don't want to push it too far. Um, and part of the discussion then with our director was about, well, if you're experimenting, if, if it's really about experimenting, we need to be able to fail. An experiment has to be able to go wrong. Otherwise, it's not really an experiment. Otherwise, it's a demonstration or something. And he was really scared about this. And this, 
and, and, and uh, this really struck a nerve. Um, and I thought there's something to this. This is really interesting. This is really scaring him. What, what's this about? Why being afraid of failure? And this then made me think this, about this further. And we started talking about the possibility of, of, of doing an exhibition on the concept of failure, if, if it provokes such a strong response. And, and, and in, in a way, one of our first failures was that we submitted the, the application late. There was an application opportunity to, to submit. It, was, it went in late, but it was nonetheless granted sort of surprisingly. And, and we were given a slot to, to exhibit in the Octagon Gallery in 2018-19. So that's, that's the, the background to this. And, and the second failure then was, so we submitted this in, in early 2017, at the start of this year, February or thereabout, uh, late January, we submitted our, our, our application, it got granted by the end of February, and in early March, <coughs> the place opened. Uh, I don't know if some of you have come across this, Museum of Failure Innovation in Helsingborg in, in Sweden. Literally two, three weeks after, after our, our, our exhibition sort of started in, in, its, in its infancy, somebody else announced they're opening a Museum of Failure. So we thought, okay, this is interesting. Um, and they have, but there is quite, a, there is quite a, a, a different focus. So this is not what we are trying to achieve. This really focuses on products primarily and, and, and designs that have failed, like Colgate lasagna. Never took off, you would have never seen it on the shelves. <laughs> so this is, this is what this is based on, but conceptually quite different in a way that, beside the fact that it's, I, haven't, I, I really would like to go, I haven't been, but it looks like a very standard type exhibition. There doesn't look to be anything very innovative about it, besides the fact also that it starts conceptually from an assumption that everybody agrees what failure is about. And we fundamentally disagree with that notion. What we want to do is actually challenge that notion and get people starting a dialogue on what do we mean by failure, as opposed to say, there's lots of things that have gone wrong that we can all agree on. I, I don't see personally that the great benefit in that. And the other thing that's going to be very different is that because of that dialogue that we want to build into the exhibition, we want to co-create it. So we want to work with people probably primarily a, a, around the UCL community, but hopefully even a little bit beyond and not us pick lots of objects that we agree are, are about failure, but actually have other people work with us on selecting what should go on display in an exhibition on failure. So it, it'll be co-created, very different from people deciding what design has flopped and therefore it goes on a shelf on, 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 in a case and, and with a story. In terms of, very briefly, in terms of the space, so some of you might know UCL, the Portico building, and the Octagon, this is the main library, the old main entrance. And literally down underneath the main, the main central part under the dome is the Octagon Gallery. Um, this is sort of what it looks like. And at this, bit, at this point, I'll hand over to Vesna. Okay. So, thank you. Um, so I come into this as a visual artist, so uh, the, you know, not as an archaeologist. And uh, what would be good to add, that this is uh, Primarily, the main visitors of this space are going to be students. So this is a university corridor, essentially. <coughs> or, uh, 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 so, but coming and maybe continuing on what Neil was saying, that uh, what I'm interested in is, is precisely the design of the exhibition, and to what extent and in what way design will communicate the idea of failure of all other things. So, given the context of TAG, I'm interested in exploring the relationship between material culture and failure. Uh, sorry, material culture, failure of course, but uh, material culture and design, or to what extent the physical appearance of stuff immediately communicates a story or a narrative of sorts. So uh, I'll read a bit, otherwise I'll be lost. So uh, the questions we are sort of asking, and I'm actually, I'm more hoping to hear <laughs> feedback uh, because we are only starting. The people we are inviting to collaborate are going to be mainly academics, but from different disciplines. So uh, in terms of design and in terms of physical qualities of stuff, I would like to start with the space, because that's the, the first thing you sort of encounter, and it's a particular kind of space, because uh, it, is, um, uh, it is essentially it is a cross point between... Um, uh, it's a cross point between two corridors. It is extremely busy. Uh, so, uh, hmm. in a way, we started from the idea that this is a failing exhibition space because uh, you are not encouraged to stop and look. Because my experience every time I've been to UCL is that people run through it. So even if you want to see the exhibition, you will stay 
very near to the, uh, to the display cases but be reluctant to step back because you may be hit on the way or something. So it's not a very inviting space to spend time in. So essentially it is a walkthrough space. And uh, so my first concern design-wise was to, um, well is, because we still don't know what the objects are going to be, so we don't know what is going to be on display. What I'm interested in, in the first instance, and what th also this photo doesn't quite do justice because you see only one door, or one corridor <coughs> leading in or out. There is one on this side and then two more like this. So essentially there's these, um, yeah, there's these four sides, essentially <coughs> four uh, display areas, like windows, and that's it. And that's the space we would have to work with. So, uh, so from the idea that this is sort of a, fail, a, a failing exhibition space, we were thinking about uh, um, actually seeing it in, more, in a more positive light, and how would you do, um, what would you have to do to actually change somebody's movement through space? in order to engage with the exhibition. And also, because this is an active exhibition space, stuff that is exhibited there is um, frequently very challenging because it draws from UCL collections and because there is very interesting things in it. At the moment, there is uh, a decomposing Jeremy Benton's head, uh, uh, among other things. But this is a, a kind of sight that students who pass there sometimes several times a day <laughs> are used to seeing. So in terms of getting somebody's attention with the object itself, it feels a bit difficult. And especially, you know, especially as you're running through the space and you're used to seeing human body parts, for example, exhibited around. So it, it feels, um, in that sense, so w the, the design-wise and space-wise, you are not uh, allowed to bring in additional furniture. So I, uh, like, honestly, I invite suggestions on how to interfere with people's movement through space visually. We were actually thinking of optical tricks because we can't uh, move any, any furniture, but whether we could, for example, put in um, you know, the artificial hole in the wall so somebody thinks it's, it's slipping or falling in and then is forced to at least change that pace and hopefully either look around or engage with the, with the exhibits. So as I said, we don't know what the exhibits are going to be. Uh, so. Uh, uh, We've chosen, so we were thinking whether uh, uh, certain uh, objects in themselves, in a way, uh, regardless of you knowing their biographies, so to what extent uh, objects make their biographies apparent immediately. And uh, that's why we started with the clip um, that you've seen. Uh, so uh, uh, part of Ariana 5 is the new CL collections. Uh, and it's been exhibited relatively recently, but um, I would suggest that even though you wouldn't necessarily know seeing this, that it is uh, Ariana 5, or you know, a bit of de debris from Ariana 5, you would, um, you could link it to failure, right? Because it's in a ruined state, because it is in a state of, you know, uh, uh, it, is, it is more likely sort of to think in that direction. There is another excellent example that actually the biography and the story behind it is almost immediately there. So, as uh, would anybody care to take a guess? Without knowing anything, just based on an image. And if I, or if should I tell you that this is an esophagus, and this is a sword, <coughs> and they live together, and they go as a part of the same event. So yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is immediately there. So in that sense, even at the first glance, you. Um, you, you get the picture. You would link this to, to, to failure, right? So we were, so we were, so th this is, uh, we were playing with <coughs> objects that we know UCL collections have, just in that design context or representational context, to what extent is the idea of, of failure immediately there or not? And then we tried something different. So objects that potentially, uh, it would make more sense for them to stand in for success rather than a failure, like this. But Thomas will continue on, on these. And this goes, goes back, I guess, to the, the, the point at the start. That we don't have, we don't agree, and we started talking about this, this particular collection that these coins are from. We don't quite agree on what, what failure is and what success is. And therefore, and, and we've been working on, on this project for some time together. So therefore, if, if you put this question out wider, I think there'll be huge disagreement about some of these. As, as you know, we can probably agree that the esophagus 
the punctured esophagus from the sword swallower or the, the piece of Ariadne 5 represents failure in many ways. But you know, this is the achievement of a leading, world leading scientist and, and the medals, some of the medals he won in our, in our, in our collection, which, which, which was left in, 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 after, after he died. Um, so therefore definitely highlight success, a very successful man in his life. Um, if I tell you, these are the, the, the medals awarded to Francis Galton, and some of you have heard of the name Francis Galton, might think slightly differently, the godfather of, of eugenics. So we have, we have his collection. Do we call this still a success? And this, this then goes on to the question, you know, is uh, all, all the materials from his, from his eugenics lab are in our collection? Is, is, is that an, uh, an evidence, is that evidence of, of failure, of success? Which is it? He was a very successful scientist. You can see some of the work he did, uh, did by measuring brains, including Flinders Petrie sending him schools from, from, Hara, from, from Egypt to, to measure and compare in his scale. So there was whole, a whole network of people that then celebrated to some degree, and, and some of them forgotten about on purpose, working together on, on this project of, of eugenics. And it was extremely successful, especially in the United States, but also, also in Europe right until the 1940s, and then with obvious reasons, taken to a, a, a complete um, new level by, by, by fascism, and, and therefore, <coughs> luckily, went out of, out of business. But still, um, is this a failure? Is eugenics a failure? At its time, it was a success. Vina, it's been discredited. So this is, this is uh, some of the other objects from, from, the, from the Golden Collection. As you can see, an eye color chart, a hair color chart. Um, most of them made in Germany in the early 1900s, and then used in places like Dachau and Auschwitz to kind of chart people, record people. So awful stuff in many ways, we would say now. But part of a very successful science at, in its day. So is this, is this failure, is eugenics in itself? Is it, is it a failed science? And it's discredited, but is it? And these are some of the objects that I think can inspire, inspire much more interesting conversations about success and failure. Um, and this then really leads me to the to the end. Uh, I just wanted, don't want to forget some, some of, the, of the more important points. And as I said, what, what I would like to finish with are then a set of questions about failure and success more generally, uh, and, 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 and failure in particular. But I, I think th these two are always sort of presented as opposites, and, and that's very interesting in its own right. But for starters, do we agree, or you know, can there be, if, if the objects are supposed to speak for themselves, can there be such a thing as a material culture of failure? Is it possible that we can understand or communicate something like failure or even something like success, looking at the gold medals, other things you might be able to think of, through objects alone? Do we need more context? Is it possible? Do they speak enough? Do objects, does material culture speak enough for itself? And then maybe more important questions about this. Why would we want to do such a thing in the first place? What, what's the purpose of this? And, and the other thing, going back to my director who was, got really scared about this notion of failure and what kind of gave rise to this, this project, why does it seem to strike such a chord? Why are people so interested? There's this whole failure chic out there. You know, there's lots of books, self-help books about how you have to fail to succeed. And, and, and I, often, I, I find it's, it's quite problematic. But it's out there, it's extremely popular. Uh, and, and, and so why does it seem to strike such a core? And then, then maybe very finally, what is, there, uh, what, what is there to it? And is it, a very, is it a useful thing beyond the fact that maybe looking at other failures makes us feel a little bit less bad about our own shortcomings? Is it, or is there something more useful to this? <coughs> does, does that exhibiting failure, thinking about failure, what is the benefit? Is there a benefit? And th this is really what, I, what I'd like to leave hanging as, as the kind of the final question, sort of linking a little bit with Neil's talk and some of the others maybe. The, the story, is, is loss a good thing? Is failure a good thing? And how can we debate that in, a, in, a, in an interesting way? I think that's it. Thank you. <laughs>